So to begin, you're going to need some sort of a, a V-shaped bench pin or bench hook. And it could simply be a piece of wood that you saw a V into and attach it to your table surface. They make ones that are special that have a little um, tongue to them so that they sit on the edge nicely. Um, they can always improvise. All right, so I'm going to take a C-clamp, shaped kind of like a center C, and I'm going to attach it to the bench here at home. And righty tidy. What do you see? Always good to remember. All right, so this is your surface. This is where you're going to do all your sawing, cutting, filing, um, holding, sanding sometimes, different things. So this is really useful in front of the bench. All right, the jeweler's saw frame looks like this. And it has a handle. And it has three areas that you can adjust. The top, the bottom, and the back. So I think you can see the little teeth. One side is smooth, which is this side, and the other side has little teeth. Um, and the teeth point in a specific direction. They're either pointing down or they're pointing up. So you want to make sure when you put it into your saw frame that the little teeth are pointing down towards the ground when you're, when you're sawing vertically. Okay? And the smooth side of the blade goes to the inside of the frame, and the teeth go to the outside. I have a quick little sketch that might show the teeth a little bit better if you couldn't see that because it's so tiny. Um, so just make sure that you don't, that your teeth are facing down, um, out, outwards from your softening. So it should go in like this. All right, I hope that helps. So what I'm going to do now is set up my soft. The first one that I usually set up is the bottom. You could do the top or the bottom. I usually tend to do the bottom. And what I do is I just loosen a little wing nut a little bit so that this part is loose and I think you can see there's a little space there. And in that space that's where the, the bottom of my saw blade is going to go and then I'm going to tighten it. So let me go ahead and do that and turn the teeth point the right way. I can feel them by going down. So I'm going to slide it all the way into that groove. And it's in there. And now I'm just going to use my hand to slowly tighten, tighten that in there. And then once it's in, I can just give it a good snug turn by hand. Okay, just hand tight. Now, the other adjustment, this at the top, it's not quite reaching. So that's where this adjustment comes into play. And this adjustment will um, adjust the, the the length. So I want this to be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to loosen this and I'm going to slide this down a little bit. And the sweet spot is where the saw blade comes halfway up this distance. So about halfway up leaves you enough room um, to stretch. I'm show you why in a second. So I'm going to actually make this a little bit longer. So once I get that set, I'm going to hand tighten the back one. Okay, so so far I tightened the, the lower one and the, bot, the back of the soft frame. Make sure those two are really tight. Lastly, yeah, I'm going to drop that into that space. And while I do that, I'm going to be pushing and leaning against it with my body weight. I'm, I'm leaning forward really hard. And while I'm doing that, it's actually squeezing this blade. You can actually see it kind of... Um, flex a little bit. It flexes in and while you are pushing, while you are pushing, you're going to turn a little the top and that tight. Okay, once it's tight, you can let go and that will pull the blade nice and tight. And you ideally should hear, when you flick it with your fingernail, you should hear a little pinging sound. Okay? Um, and that's that lets you know that the blade is in there tight. It's not wobbling. It's going to cut your metal really nicely. Okay. Um, once you have that, you're ready to put some either beeswax. Okay, just a little piece of beeswax on there. Just work that over the blade. If you have fur life, this is a real product, but you could use this alternatively. It does the same job. It's just a synthetic kind of a wax. Um, and then you're ready to start sawing with your saw blade, your saw frame. Okay, so that's all set. I'm just going to lay it down for a second. And I am going to draw 
a couple types of lines here. So let's do you know, a straight line here, a curving line here, and I always have students practice a zigzag because those angles are tricky and kind of a nuisance and are really good to practice. So if you can cut all of those types of cuts, you can cut any shape out of a piece of metal that you can imagine, draw, um, or conceive of. So um, be thinking about that as you're doing this. This practice is for a purpose. Okay. And I'm using copper here. I'm going to just draw on the Sharpie. So when you saw, there's a couple things that are specific to jewelry, um, sawing through metal, sheet metal. You are always going to try to hold your saw frame vertically, up and down, straight up and down. You don't want to tilt on an angle like you're cutting a log. Um, the reason for that is that you'll be cutting through the thinnest portion of the metal at a time. If you angle it a little bit, you're actually going through a thicker section of metal. And cutting through metal is hard on the blade. So you want to make its job really easy. So you want it to glide through. So get in the habit of sawing vertic vertical strips up and down. Okay. The other thing you have teeth from about here to here. So you don't want to just use the middle teeth. You don't want to do short little strokes like that. You want to do nice long strokes so that you're taking advantage of all of those teeth. All right, safety. You want to make sure that your fingers are to the side of where you're cutting or um, behind the blade. If my fingers are back here, this is smooth. This is not going to cut my hand back here. So if I'm holding my metal back here, my fingers are safe. If I'm holding my fingers in front of where I'm cutting, that's not a good idea, okay? Because this cuts through sheet metal and can definitely cut through your skin. So you want to be really careful. So fingers to the side or behind or both. Okay, I tend to do this a lot. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I think you'll be able to see that. So I'm going to do my straight cut first. Now, to get a groove started, sometimes it's hard to, to just start sawing because your blade just jumps around, okay, and you, don't, you can't get it started. So a good thing to do is to put your saw frame right into that V groove, right in the wood, drop it down to the bottom, bring your metal right to the blade, I don't want to put my hands on either side, and do a couple upstrokes. I'm in the wood, I'm cutting through wood and metal right now. So I did a couple upstrokes. Now I have a little groove started, so now I'm going to back out of the wood because I don't want to cut my my bench in half. So I want to back out a little bit, but my, my saw has a nice groove to get started and it won't jump around anymore. So now I'm going to go ahead and start sawing, and I'm going to do a nice, long, quickly, gentle, steady stroke. So you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. This is when you can break a blade. <laughs> And do your best to follow right along your line. Um, and cutting is really simple. Okay, same thing for the curve, except this time I'm going to try as hard as I can to be turning the metal with my opposite hand so that my saw frame is always going forward rather than me turning my arm and sawing in some sort of awkward way. Um, it's safer and it's just really good practice. So I'm going to go ahead and get my groove started into the wood and metal. Pull it out. So your opposite hand, sorry, you can see my, it's kind of like a big clamp trying to hold that metal down. Um, a small piece of metal, that's If your saw blade gets stuck, which it will at some point, let go of your metal, let it hang, and let it turn the way it wants to go. And that way, when you pull it down, that will free your blade back up. Okay, and that's it. Like, don't panic. Okay, just get stuck. Sometimes 
just going to ask you to tricky. Okay, so straight cut, curvy cut, and the last one is zigzag. Again, same thing, go into the wood, bring your metal to the blade, drop it down, do a couple up strokes. Now, here's the tricky part. When I get to the corner, what I want to do is I want to keep my, my blade going up and down, up and down as I slowly turn the metal um, or my saw until I get around that corner and then I can start cutting. So you're actually like marching in place. If you try to just swing that blade around, it'll break off every time because the blade is actually wider in this direction than this direction. So that will snap the blade really quickly. So the, the angles are probably the hardest cuts to do and really good to practice them. Okay, so I'm kind of marching in place, I'm not cutting, I'm almost like putting back on myself as I'm rotating my metal with my left hand. And once I get all the way around that right angle, now I can start cutting forward. So I'm going to go to the next angle. I'm place, so here's the sound. I'm going to go to the next I'm making space for the blade. So I'm slowly rotating my metal around, and here's the sound. Once I get all the way around. Zigzag. Okay, so you can get some really sharp angles that way. Now, in jewelry and metalsmithing, you want to be careful with sharp angles because in a piece of jewelry, that would be uncomfortable to wear. Um, so filing and sanding might be in order. But just, um, it is important to know how to create angles. Um, you know, depending on your piece, you might have some some points um, and some angular shapes. This, you can patina the metal um, with some darkening agents, chemicals. Um, so there's lots of things you can do. It's just a really simple, simple piece of copper. There's a little pair of earrings. Um, so once you learn how to saw metal, it opens up a lot of opportunities for design. So it's really important to practice. So practice, practice. Um, and remember, my best tips are keeping your saw frame vertical, using wax frequently to help it glide through the metal for less breakage being really careful going around corners and curves to keep your saw frame going up and down while you're making the, those turns and getting in the habit of trying to turn and control your curves and your angles. Safety is really important. Keep those fingers to the side of your metal or behind, behind the blade where it's smooth and safe and just watch what you're doing at all times. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Good luck with your sawing practice and I will see you soon.